This video is an introduction to the force that's called friction. Okay, so friction is a force that you experience every day that always opposes motion. So friction will always point in the opposite direction as an object is moving. And there are two types of friction. First type I'm going to talk about is called static friction. All right, so static friction. Static friction occurs when there is no movement ah. between an object that is trying to move but not yet moving and what the object is sitting on. Okay, and so the force of static friction is an unusual force in that it can vary vary anywhere from zero if there's no applied force and to some fixed value or some maximum value and because the force of static friction varies with applied force. The force that's being applied to the object. So for example, if I were to take a rope and tie it to this box, I were to pull on that rope with tension T, I would have a force of static friction before the box starts moving that is equal in magnitude and therefore my vector arrow should be equal in length in the opposite direction. However, if I were to take that same rope and I were to pull on it much harder, this is the same box, it doesn't look like that, but it is, and I were to pull on the rope much harder with a force of tension T, my force of static friction would also increase the same amount. And so tension and the force of friction in case of static friction are always equal, or the applied force and the force of static friction are always equal, which means that these forces are balanced and therefore these forces are in translational equilibrium. Okay, forces are balanced, they're in translational equilibrium, which means no acceleration. Okay. We when we talk about the force of static friction, we calculate it using the following equation. We say that the force of static friction is less than or equal to the, force, the coefficient of static friction. This is our coefficient. 
times the reaction force. Okay, and when you say that it's less than or equal to because um, it varies with the applied force. So like I talked about before, if there's no applied force, there's no static friction, and therefore the force of friction would be zero. Um, but you could go up to some maximum value after which the force becomes dynamic friction. Okay, so the second kind of force that I want to talk about is the force of dynamic friction. Which is our second kind of friction. So dynamic friction, so if static friction was when the object was not moving, dynamic friction is the friction the force of friction between an object and surface that it sits on when the object is moving. So when the object starts moving, you're now dealing with dynamic friction. And the cool thing about dynamic friction, the force of dynamic friction, is always less than force of static friction. The reason for that, so if I were to zoom in on a surface and the object sitting on the surface, I'd see that there's lots and lots of grooves and things between the two that fit together. And so when it's static, these grooves stick into each other and make it hard for the object to move. But once the object starts moving, once it becomes dynamic, these two surfaces are more separated, and the grooves just kind of slide over each other. So that's why the force of dynamic friction is much less than the force of static friction. And so for dynamic friction, um, we also use a different equation. We say that the force of dynamic friction is equal to the coefficient of dynamic friction times the reaction force. Okay, notice that this is an equal sign right here. And the reason it's an equal sign is that the force of dynamic friction does not change with applied force. So however much force I apply, once it starts moving, the force of friction is the same. So if I were to illustrate that, I could draw, so if I have my surface, I have my object that sits on the surface, this nice box, I attach my rope, I pull on the rope, tension T, and I see that I have some friction pointing backward from the box, in this direction, right, and the tension is much greater, and the tension I'm pulling on the rope with is much greater than the force of friction from the dynamic friction between the surface and the box. Therefore, uh, the object is accelerating because I have unbalanced forces. All right, that's all. Thank you.